With all of Unity's recent changes, I decided to try out Godot. So I downloaded Godot with .NET of course and wow, this thing is tiny. So I started a new project and yeah, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. What What's a node? So after watching a quick tutorial, I created a character body with a capsule for the player and I set up a basic scene to test my player movement. Next, I followed a quick tutorial to set up VS Code with Godot so I could code on my second screen. Now I could start coding, so I started by coding the player controller. And because the C-sharp library seems to be quite similar to Unity's, I was able to code it without barely looking at the docs. Here's some of the code side by side. Next, I coded the camera controller, which I stubbornly coded without researching first, and then later found this amazing thing called a spring arm that also does obstacle avoidance. So I created a new script and attached it to the spring arm, and the new script was significantly smaller than my old script. Now I wanted to upgrade the visuals, so I started by creating a robot character, and since this is just a learning project, I thought it would be fitting to use the design from the Godot icon. Then I gave him a very quick rough texture with the body parts sharing the same UV space, and then I gave him a very simple rig, and lastly I created an idle and running animation for him. So I exported him to the project and then started setting up the animation tree. And this is where I had a few issues with the state machine's transition parameters. I'll probably discuss it in another video, but essentially I spent a while creating a script to kind of just re-simulate how Unity's parameters work. Making the player face the direction he is moving should have been a fairly straightforward. But it seems the C Sharp docs hasn't been updated. Because unless I'm missing something, what just doesn't exist. And this wasn't the only time I had issues with the documentation not being up to date. Anyway, next I created animations for jumping, falling and landing. Set them up in the animation tree and altered the movement transition speed so the airborne movement is more realistic. So the final animation I made was a spin attack, similar to the one from Crash Bandicoot. The spin attack can also be used in the air to perform a double jump. I should probably fix this, but it's fine for now. Now it's time to make it pretty with some effects. So after I watched the tutorial on how the GPU particle system works, I made these effects for jumping, launching and landing. I'd say the particle system is fairly similar to Unity's, but it does seem like there's a few less options. I also made the camera shake when the player attacks, jumps and lands. The camera shake script works similar to most, except it uses this noise class to get a random value for the camera offset. Now I needed to improve the environment, so I modelled and textured a platform and split the platform into parts. Then in Godot, I started making a test world for the player, and I may have got a little carried away and added moving platforms as well. Now because my player isn't a rigid body, I had to code the player to follow the platform's movement. I used an area 3D node to detect what platform the player is on. Area 3D nodes are very similar to collider triggers in Unity, you just need to assign your function to the event. Lastly, I added some clouds with a particle system and some mountain tops in the background. So the last thing I wanted to do was give the player something to hit. So I grabbed my barrel model from another project, put it in the scene and then realised that I had issues with the colour palette texture filtering. So I messed around with the import settings for like an hour but I couldn't fix this. So let me know in the comments if you know how to fix this. I ended up just creating a bigger texture for it. So the last thing to do was to create an effect for breaking the barrel. I started creating a 3D particle effect for the wood parts, but then realised that for some reason you can't rotate 3D particles with the default shader. So I decided just to create a script to spawn the parts and randomly add force to them. So that's everything I've done on this test project so far. I'm going to continue adding features to this project and see what issues I run into. If you want to see more videos with me testing Godot, let me know by hitting the like button. And don't forget to subscribe.